Good day, future entrepreneurs. Welcome to our part two of our lesson three, which is the belief system. So for our lesson two, we will be discussing, or part two, sorry, um, we will be discussing about force field and that. So what is that? Um, you know, uh, some people struggle when they um, have tough decisions to make. Halimbawa, sa isang negosyo, um, may decide kayo, you have to decide whether you're going to expand, whether you're going to um uh, to do something like this, you, you're going to invest, ayan. Minsan, sobrang struggle, di ba? Lalo na kung tough yung decision na kailangan mong gawin. Minsan, you have to know the pros and cons, ayan, and you're really, you're really confused on what to choose between dun sa mga solutions that you have. So, when we make difficult or challenging decisions, it really pays to use an effective, structured decision-making technique. So, course, with analysis is a decision-making technique or strategy that will help you improve the quality of your decisions and increase your chances of success. So, course, with analysis, there's one technique um, in this lesson. We will explore what it is and how we can do it. So, first, uh, let's have a bit brief background. So, see, force field analysis was created by Kurt Lewin in the 1940s. It was originally used in his work as a social psychologist. But today, it is also used in businesses, especially kapag ka you're going to make or to communicate a go or no go decisions, a yes or no decision. So, um, uh, what does the force field analysis say? This uh, says that situations are maintained by an equilibrium between forces that drive change and others that resist change. So sometimes you have you want change to happen. You want something to improve. Okay? So yun yung ano mo, yun yung uh, yun yung equilibrium mo, yung change na gusto mo. Ngayon, um uh, there are forces na magsusuport. There are empowering belief na magsusuport, mag empower doon sa sa change na gusto mo as uh, there are limiting beliefs or yung mga mag-resist dun sa change na But according to the force field analysis, for change to happen, the driving forces must be strengthened. Yung mga positive forces na para magsus na magsusupport dun sa change na yon strengthen mo daw yon at yung mga resisting forces, gawan mo ng paraan na mapakina yun. This is an example of a uh, force field analysis. Ito yung worksheet niya. Ito yung mismo parang illustration. So, halimbawa, here, this is your proposed change. Thus, you will identify the forces for change or yung mga sumusuporta. Ayan, dito sa pagbabago na to. Tapos, ito yung mga forces resisting change. Mga problema na pwede mo kaharapin diba? while you are pursuing this change. This tool is used for making decisions by analyzing the forces for and against the change and for communicating the reasoning behind your decision. Through this, you will now identify, so kung mayroong mga forces resisting change, um, kung mas matimbang to, kesa dito sa forces na nag-support sa change, um, are you going to go in that decision pa din ba? Or, papalakasin mo muna, i-weekend mo muna pala yung nag-resist, at papalakasin mo yung nag-support for that, para ma-push itong proposed change. Next, for example, so let's um, uh, let's try to discuss or to understand the steps na pwede nating i-take while using force field analysis. First one is, describe your plan or proposal for change. So you should have, you ha must have, you must define your goal or vision for change. Write it down in the box of um, the middle of the page. So dito mo siya. Whatever proposed change. For example, uh, isang negosyo, you want to upgrade factory with a new manufacturing. So, gusto mo maging ano na, maging um, high-tech yung mga equipment na meron ka in your factory. Kasi, syempre, um, later we will discuss what are the forces supporting that change and the forces resisting that change. Next, yan, ito na, you will identify the forces. 
uh, the forces for change or ito yung support. Think about the forces that are driving that change that it could be internal or external. For example, again, ang ano natin is you will upgrade the factory with the new manufacturing. For example, these are the internal drivers. Um, Siyempre, ang nagsusupport dyan is outdated na yung mga machines natin, di ba? So, and um, dahil nga sobrang outdated na nito at palagi nang nasisira, natitikline na yung team moral. Parang sobra ding dumadami na yung trabaho ng mga machines. And you need to increase profitability. Dahil, siyempre, kapag ka um, uh, kapag ka high-tech na mga bago na mas maraming magagawa within a day, mas marami tayong magbibenta. Yung external drivers natin po din po, ayan, volatile, uncertain operating environment. So, yung, kumbaga parang changing din talaga yung operating environment natin. So, it could um, add to that desire to upgrade the um, the the factory with the new manufacturing. Disruptive technology, diba? It could happen na external drivers, ito yung mga outside the company, ha? Um, pwedeng, di ba, yung ibang companies, ano na, um, yun na talaga yung ginagamit nila, kaya mas profitable din sila. Changing demographic trends. So, ayan, so dahil ito na yung gusto, itong quality ng product na nagagawa nitong man new manufacturing equipment na to, yung ito na ng mga tao. Ayan, so dahil doon, pwede, pwede siyang mag-support doon sa change. Next, that's our step two. Next is, again na, i-identify muna yung forces against that change. Brains on the forces that resist or unfavorable to that. Could be internal and external. So internal, fears of the unknown. Baka mamaya ganito, baka mamaya ganito. Ito yung first talaga. And most of the time, when we want change, may mga fear of the unknown. Next, existing organizational structure. So possible na kapag ka, ginamit tong high tech na to um high new technology na to mabawasan kailangan nating bawasan yung mga tao na um uh pwede mabawasan yung mga managers supervisor okay konti na lang yung supervise it could happen and also that's not how we do it here on attitude iba yung mga matatanda <laughs> sa isang company so, yeah, hindi hindi ganyan yung way ng pag oh, hindi ganyan yung paggawa niyan mga attitude external existing commitments to partner or that so baka meron na kayong naunang commitment sa inyong uh, sa ibang businesses or ibang organization government legislation uh, mamaya hindi pala pinapayagan into that particular country and your obligations toward your country so ito yung pwedeng mag-resist doon sa change that you are proposing so that's our step three. Step four is you're going to assign scores. So, ito, again, um, ginagamit to and very subjective ito based on your belief, based on uh, what you believe in na uh, kung gaano ito nakaka-affect doon sa change na gusto. Yun, so, score each force from one being the weak and five strong. So, para kang nagsisurvey. According to the degree of influence, each one has on the plan. And then, add up the scores for each side. And so, I'll show you an example. So, um, kada force, so, check mo yan, and then, i-check mo kung gaano siya nakaka-affect doon sa change na gusto. For example, well, Ito, sumusupport to, di ba? So, customers want new products. Siyempre, ang laking factor niyan, di ba? So, for um, improve production speed and two. Again, it is based or it really depends on your belief. Reduce training time, low maintenance cost, di ba? So, it, um, kumbaga, based on your belief, ito yung um, impact niya or in influence niya to the change that I want. Forces against against change and loss of staff over time. Siyempre, mawalan tayo ng, or talagang magtatanggal na tayo ng staff. Kasi may bago tayong equipment. Kaya na monitoring na lang yung kailangan. Hindi. So, uh, maubos, or magtatanggal talaga tayo mag-delay. 
tayo. Next, staff here full of new technology. Ba? mga May mga staff na ayaw nila ng bago, ay nilang matukunan yun. Kasi bagong training yan for sure. Fact on environment. So, for you, ayan, dahil di naman masyado makaka-apekto tong new technology na to sa environment, so okay lang. Cost, ayan, malaking factor din ang cost talaga and disruption. So, if you think na matakaroon ng disruption for that, of that equipment, so, just, just write it down. And then, tingnan mo, iskoran mo siya lahat. Ngayon, so, this 4, 2, 6, plus 3, 9, 10. So, yun. So, total 10 here, total is 8. So, ngayon, nakita mo na na mas marami or mas lamang yung score ng forces against change. So, kahit gusto mo itong particular change na to, kasi lang ang daming pwedeng kumontra. So, yun. So, what are you going to do now? Step 5, we will analyze and apply. You can use this illustration in two. Una, you, have to, you will decide whether or not to move forward with the decision. So, you will decide, ah, kasi mas, um, mas matimbang yung forces against change. Sige, huwag na natin do it. O kaya naman, gawin pa din natin. If you re still want to do that, ayan, what you will do is, um, you will think about which supportive forces you can strengthen and which opposing or resisting forces you can weaken, and how to make the change more successful. So you will think now, diba ito yung nag-strength, uh, ito yung nag-support, ano yung kailangan mong strengthen? Diba? Um, eh, low naman talaga yung maintenance cost niyan compared to, halimbawa, ah, compared to the um, equipment that we have right now in our factory. So, sige, taasan natin ang score to. Ganyan. Tapos, um, taasan natin tong low maintenance cost. Tapos, babaan natin itong cost na ito. Why? Weekend mo siya. Why? Kasi, compare naman sa maintenance cost na nai-incur ng old na equipment natin, mas lower pa din yung maintenance cost nito. So, medyo mabababa na yung malaki lang yung ilalabas natin talaga. Pero in the long run, medyo bababa na din talaga itong cost na ito. Yun. So, mag-benefit pa rin tayo for that. So, pwede mo siyang laruin. Kung baga, parang dahil nalaman mo na, yan, iniscoran mo na siya, pwede mong i-empower to and i-weaken to. Gumawa ka ng solution para ma-weaken tong mga um, nandito sa So, for example, um, um, for example, um, you ha halimbawa yung mga staff na may fear sa bagong technology, fearful of the new technology, free siya, di ba? So, what what are you going to do? Uh, i-train sila, di ba? Pero, it will add to the cost. Another cost na naman siya. Okay, so mag add siya sa cost, pero, mag, um, mag-reduce itong staff fearful of the new technology. Kasi, syempre, may trainings ka naman. Eh. So, ano ba, magiging one na lang to. Pero ito, mag add yung cost natin. Ganun siya. So, yun. So, um, next is, for example, um, you can tell the staff na ipaunawa mo sa mga staff mo that change is necessary for business survival. Diba? Um, and for that, ayan, pwedeng i- support nito yung change. Diba? So, ano, um, kumbaga parang staff's understanding about the the change that we want to implement in the company. So, that staff, that new machines would introduce variety and interest to their jobs. Diba? So, medyo sisipagin kayo dito, mas madali na yung trabaho nyo. So, you, you, it can also add points to the force that will support the change. What else? It can, you can uh, do, you can raise their wages, ayan, to reflect new productivity, ba? It can add to the cost again, ayan, pero it can, um, alimbawa, may mga staff na, eto, loss of staff over time, may mga staff na, dahil ayaw nila sa bagong technology, pwede silang umalis sa company. So, um, kung i-raise mo yung wages niya, magtataas lang yung cost mo, pero ma ma bababa yung loss of staff mo over time. Then, um, kapag nag-install ka nitong mga machines na to, compare sa old machine natin, it can eliminate pollution. Di ba? So, um, yung impact on the environment, pwede nang maging zero yan. Kasi, kung wala naman talaga siyang pollution, 
compare sa old na equipment natin, eh di why not, di ba? Gawin na talaga natin or mag-upgrade na talaga tayo. Or whatever, di ba? Ano pang kailangan mong um, improve sa kanila. So, yun. So, think about it. Adjust the scores. Add the scores here. So, yun. Tapos, itotal mo siya. Yun. So, if you, for example, I did all what I've said, what will happen is, di ba, 11-10 siya. What will happen is, um, pwedeng tumaas yung mga in favor doon sa plano or sa sa change na gusto natin at bumaba yung mga against dun sa change. May mga possibilities or mga instances sa pwedeng maging against or di masuportahan. So that is the help of force field analysis. So again, um, noong una, sa social psychology lang talaga siya ginagamit but um, kumbaga parang na ano na siya. Um, more and more parang naging nagagamit na rin siya when it comes to the decision making. So, yun. so um, uh, that is first world analysis. So thank you so much for listening, and um, I, I hope that you uh, subscribe in my YouTube channel. Um, like this video. You may type your comments on the comment section and share this to your friends whom you know na kailangan nila yung malaman itong lesson na ito. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you on the next video lessons. Thank you.